What is going on everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me. And what we're going to do today is create a new project and deploy an Azure Kubernetes Services or AKS cluster with Pulumi. So in one of my previous videos, you'll see that I created a new project, spun up Pulumi, all that good stuff. But now that we have it spun up, I want to actually try to use it for something. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create that AKS cluster with some Python code. Uh, Pulumi has a specific SDK for Azure, and then we're gonna use that SDK and we're gonna create a uh, AKS cluster. So let's check it out. So the first thing that I wanna take a look at is if we look up Pulumi Azure, Right, we're going to get this, um, well, no, actually, this isn't what we want. We want, where's it? Okay, here's GitHub. Yep. So what I want to do is I want to take a look specifically at the SDK. And then within the SDK, you'll see what SDKs they currently support. And then if we go ahead and click on Python, we can go to the should just be the Python. Uh, yeah, that's it, exactly. And then we can go to container services. And then within container services, we have we see a bunch of stuff for Kubernetes, but I just want to click on the Kubernetes cluster one. So what this is going to show us, uh, this class here, it's going to pretty much let us know like what uh, parameters, what methods, um, if there's any dictionaries, Boolean strings, whatever that we need that's mandatory for this uh, Python class to work properly. So let's go back to our Pulumi site and then actually I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit for everybody. So this is this is the SDK uh, specifically for uh, KS. And then this will let us know what we need to actually build the Kubernetes cluster. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new project. We're gonna say Azure. Python and let's go ahead and click next and then in here we'll just give it a name we'll just call it like AKS Python that's fine uh, project description you can change it if you want dev stack that's fine public I'm gonna change this to East US cuz I'm in Jersey so East US is gonna be the closest region to me so let's go ahead and create that project and then if you remember from the first video this is the project that we'll use or I'm sorry these are the steps that we'll use uh, depending on the operating system so like I'm on Windows right now I, I already have Pulumi installed if I go ahead and bring up PowerShell core let's go ahead and just run that as administrator oh all right perfect uh, I'm just gonna bring up the text here so you guys can see it a little bit easier all right, perfect. That's definitely going to be a little bit easier to see. Just going to be hanging off my screen, but no big deal. So what I'm going to do is, I don't think I have, here, let's just do this, make it easy. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to copy this command in. All right, so this is just going to create a new directory for us called AKS Python. The same thing that our project was called, our Pulumi project. And then we're going to CD into that directory or change, um, change directories into that directory. Okay, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and copy this. And what this is going to do is this is going to bring down our project locally. So we're going to, and then it's going to be like located in the AKS Python directory. That way we can spin up, destroy, create all that good stuff with Pulumi in a specific directory. So we'll do this. And then this is going to uh, bring down our project here. So now what we need to do is create our virtual environment. And if you remember from the first video, essentially what the virtual environments are going to be is it's like, imagine if you have a library, right? Like a like an Azure library or the Plume library, right? And then what you want to do is you want to install that library, but you don't want to install it on local host, which is perfectly fine. You don't have to because with Python, you have a virtual environment where you can install that library actually in that virtual environment. And then it's not going to touch your local host. It's pretty cool. So now we'll just go ahead and we'll activate that virtual environment, right? So as you can see, we're in that virtual environment now, and then we'll just install the requirements from Pulumi using pip, uh, which is just a package manager for Python. And this is going to go ahead and install everything for us. And once this is done, we can go ahead and bring up uh, this package in VS code. 
Okay, and we're done installing now. So I'm just gonna type in code dot. It's gonna bring up VS Code for us. I'm gonna minimize PowerShell for right now. And then let me go ahead and maximize VS Code a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna have this main.py here. And this is really what we care about. So as you can see, the main.py, this is just, like, it's like a default, right? So what it's doing is it's creating a resource group and then it's creating a storage account. So the one thing that you're going to see is the fact that we're not, this was actually a huge surprise for me. Um, I don't know why it was a surprise. Maybe it shouldn't have been, who knows, but we're not using the Azure Python SDK for this. We're using the Pulumi Azure SDK. So instead of saying like, cause, cause if you, if you don't know this, Azure has a pretty rich SDK for Python, uh, but we're not using that. Like we're using Pulumi specifically. Uh, I always thought like before I before I tested this or, or like played around with Pulumi at all, I always thought that you just took the SDK that the cloud service was providing you and then you, you pumped it in, but apparently not. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and delete all this. Boom. Now the next thing is we'll keep core. That's fine. That's for the, um, resource group if we want to create one, which eh, we technically don't need to. Uh, you could go ahead and just store it in any resource group that you want to. That's perfectly fine. But the uh, library that we're going to want to bring in here is container service. So if we go back to the SDK here, the reason why, right? So we have container service here because this is the library that we're going to be using for AKS. So let's go ahead and go back. Now, the first thing is, I mean, we could, you know, make this really fancy and, uh, you know, throw some error handling here, create a function, or I'm sorry, uh, create a function, maybe throw in some methods. We don't necessarily need a class for this because it's already a class, right? Um, so, but instead of that, we'll just use the library as is. So we're going to type in container service and then container service is going to have a method for us. And the method that we're going to want you guessed it, Kubernetes cluster. <laughs> so let's go back here and then we'll type in Kubernetes cluster. And even if I just do a dot notation here, you'll see that there's a bunch of different methods and properties that you can use, but we'll of course be using the Kubernetes cluster uh, to actually create a Kubernetes cluster, right? There's ones for like get Kubernetes cluster down here, but we want to create a Kubernetes cluster. So let's go ahead and click that and then we'll create our method here, we'll hit enter, and now we can start putting in some of our values. So the first value, if we head back to the library, I'm gonna maximize this one more time, because it still might be a little bit small. So some of these are gonna be required, some of them aren't. There's obviously like a bunch of different methods and stuff that you can push in here. The first method is, let's go ahead and check out the resource. So the resource name is gonna be what the actual name of the Kubernetes cluster is gonna be. So I'm just gonna check this out, resource name, the name of the resource, right? So we'll go back and then we'll type in resource name and this resource name can be MJL Cloud Dev. And then what I'm mainly focused on is the default node pool. So let's look at default node pool. So now we can see that it's a dictionary, it's all input, so you have to put some values in. And the default node pool is a default node pool or block definition essentially of what the Kubernetes cluster is gonna look like or the AKS cluster. So you're gonna have like a min count of worker nodes, max nodes, the name, the VM size, all that good stuff. So let's see if they actually give an example. I don't think they do. Oh yeah, exactly. This is this is what I was looking for. So they, they actually have some pretty good notes in here, which is pretty cool, but this is all of the values here that you can use to pass into the method. So what I primarily care about is the min count, max count, name, VM size, and if auto um, enable auto scaling is on or not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head back here, and then type in default node pool. And as you can see, this is, it said it's somewhere. Let's see, hold on. Yep, it's a dictionary, okay. So we'll go back here, 
create our dictionary. And then our first value is going to be min count. It's just going to do one, right? It's just a development environment. Uh, if it's a production environment or even your staging environment, if your staging environment eventually turns into your production environment, uh, you'll obviously want to bump that up to like at least two. And then we'll do max count. Max count could be one again. It's fine. The name. So name of my cluster, same thing. M J L cloud dev. And then the VM size. So the VM size is going to be like the size of the virtual machine that the worker nodes are going to be running on. So we'll just do like a, a standard D class. So we'll do standard D12 V2. And then we can go ahead and enable auto scaling. So if the application gets too large and it needs more nodes, that's perfectly fine. It just asks for a Boolean value of true. Let's just confirm that we have all that. Um, we'll do the DNS prefix as well, but we're going to do that outside of the default node pool. Um, Kubernetes version. It's just going to pick the default that Azure uses right now. I think it's, I feel like it's 115.4. I may be wrong, but yeah. So yep, that was all right. And then we're going to jump out of this dictionary here and then we're going to do DNS prefix. This DNS prefix is going to be JL cloud. Hopefully that's not taken already. Our resource group name. So I have a resource group name called Dev10 that I'm going to throw these resources into. Uh, but you can you can use you know any resource group that you want. You're probably not going to have one that's called Dev10 in your environment. And then, okay, so the biggest part here is for the authentication. So the authentication is going to be a service principle. And this service principle, it's going to need a client ID and a client secret. So let's head over to the Azure portal. I'm going to log in here. And once I'm here, I'm going to go to app registrations. Then once I'm in here, I'm going to create a new app registration. Just name this Palumi. We'll click register. And then what this is going to give us is our client ID. And then we can create a client secret. So let's go ahead and type in client ID. Again, this calls for a dictionary. Type in our client ID. The next thing that I'm going to do is obviously a very bad security protocol. But again, this is just for testing development environment. So I have my client secret here and um, I'm going to delete this client secret after this video anyway. So it's perfectly fine. Here's my client secret. I'm going to copy this, pass this in. Of course, there's better ways to do this and more secure ways to do this, but that's okay. So now I have my entire configuration here. And then what I want to do is I'm going to go back here and I just want to go through a few of these. Now, these, uh, these files here, they're all pre-made by Plumi, right? So we have some Git ignores. Uh, we have the Plumi environment, what the configuration is going to look like, East US, public, Azure Python. These are the things that we, we added in in the UI. And then the Plumi YAML. So the Plumi YAML is going to be the exact same things that we added into the UI as well. And then this requirements. So the, so the requirements is the version of Plumi and then the version of Plumi Azure, the SDK. So now if we head back over to our terminal, remember it said Plumi up and that's exactly what we'll do. So let's go ahead and clear this screen and we'll run this and let's see what happened. So the program failed and it looks like the reason why is because it didn't like the default node pool. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Default node pool. Let's see why it, oh, because there's no comma probably. So let's go back here. Click up again, give that a whirl. Nope. Invalid syntax, an unhandled error occurred, program exited. Hmm. Let's take a look here. Why does it not like this? But I didn't like it because of the comma there, maybe? Let's say. 
Haha, <laughs> there it was. Stupid commas. Alright, so this is going to take a little bit to run. Uh, I've seen it take maybe like 5-10 minutes. So that's perfectly fine. Click yes here. And then what this is going to do is it's going to go and start to create our environment. We're back. It took about, let's say maybe 10 to 15 minutes, give or take. Uh, it looks like there's a new Pulumi version. I have to update for that. That's fine. But as we can see, our Kubernetes services cluster has been created. Let's head back to AKS. I'm sorry. Let's head back to the portal. Brain fart. AKS. So we'll go to AKS. And as you can see, here's our Kubernetes cluster running. We're running, oh, 115.10. I said 115.4. I was close. I was close. And if you want to delete this, what you can do is just Pulumi destroy. And we're going to get an option here. Do we want to destroy? The answer is yes. And then that's how you can destroy your Kubernetes cluster just as quick as you created it. Thanks so much for watching this video. I appreciate it. If you like the Pulumi content, definitely let me know. Drop a comment, a like. Let me know if you want to see more of it. And, you know, maybe we could dive into the SDK a little bit more, create some new resources in Azure, things like that. Thanks, everybody, for watching.